Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, Monday, 15th April 2019. I am recording this around 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we we'll go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align the trade's direction with the market's direction. We will study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with market's direction, we like to align them with industry's strength. We will study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum. If I don't do that, you may visit the forum from our homepage. It is open to the public. And we we'll look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together we call this at a glance template because this helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after displaying the bullish headwind signal, oil went up strongly. The weekly backdrop candle colors remained cyan bullish for many weeks. This week, price came precisely to the long term weekly memory resistance line and tilted down from there. This week's candle shape is mixed, it has an upper tail and a hollow body. The color is bullish. Looking at the memory resistance line, if you were holding a long position in oil, you would be cautious, either book profit or at least protect profit using trailing stop. In the daily chart, last week price was already above the upper boundary level. This week on Monday, price opened with a gap up and went up further from the open. However, next four days it moved sideways. On Friday, we have traffic light candle color is yellow. Price is above the upper boundary level and weekly is near a memory resistance. Therefore, you might not look for a buying opportunity in oil right now. There is a memory support line nearby, therefore you might not look for a short trade as well. While oil was going up, energy sector and industries were also going up. On 28th March, I had shared a Twitter post mentioning my bullish view on a stock DNR. I shared the 360 degrees analysis snapshot at that time. 
It belongs to oil and gas exploration and production industry. The industry was starting to become cyan. After being weak, magenta for a long time in QH industry scorecard and heat map. DNR had optimal fundamental valuation indicated by the cyan color in the valuation column at that time. As of that day, when I shared the post in Twitter, DNR was up by 5.8%. This is how DNR's chart looked like at that time. It found support at the weekly memory support line and starting to go up from there. At the right edge, the weekly backdrop candle color was cyan. The daily also found support at the memory support line and price was going up from there. Industry was bullish, fundamentals were strong and the stock was starting to go up from a very low price level. Based on that, I suggested that the stock may be breaking out. After a few days, on 5th February, the stock indeed broke out of the memory resistance line in both daily as well as weekly chart. On this Friday, I looked at DNR and I saw that in the weekly chart, though the color was cyan, it was ending with a bearish shape candle. In the daily chart, price was moving in sync with oil. That is on Monday, it opened with a gap up and went up further from there. Next four days were moving sideways. Friday's candle was bearish in shape. Price was above upper boundary level and it created a reversal candle. Looking at that, I decided to book profit in the trade. How did I take the trade? When I shared the post in Twitter on 28th March, I had initiated a long position in DNR using synthetic stock. That is, I sold the put and bought the call at two strike price. The trade was initiated with 13 cents debit. On Friday, around 2.30 p.m. I closed the position with 37 cents credit. That was a significant profit in percentage terms in a few days of trading. From oil, we move on to gold. We are looking at the gold ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, we have a bearish shape candle and also bearish backdrop color candle. Gold is continuing to remain bearish. In the daily chart, price was inside a triangle pattern last week and it is continuing to remain in the triangle pattern this week as well. You may not consider taking any directional swing trade in gold until it can break out of the triangle pattern in either direction. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts, along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. In the weekly chart, both NASDAQ and NYSE went up. NASDAQ once again was stronger than NYSE. NASDAQ has no memory resistance line nearby. NYSE was close to the memory resistance and is remaining at the memory resistance this week as well. Internals this week are bullish. All the six internals 
closed in the positive and new high low for NYAC went up. The others went down but closed above zero. Internals are bullish. Is there any reason for caution? Probably yes. One is as I mentioned the NYAC broad index is near the memory resistance line and another reason for caution may be that the indices both of them are overbought even in the weekly charts. Those are reasons for caution however that doesn't mean the market is weak market is clearly bullish as seen from the market breadth analysis. Let's have a look at the market ETFs. We are looking at S&P 500 ETF SPY, NASDAQ ETF QQQ, Dow Jones ETF DIA and Russell 2000 ETF IWM all using weekly interval. SPY is bullish going up. So is true for NASDAQ QQQ. Both of them are very close to their all-time highs. DIA is also going up. However, it is underperforming the market shown by the relative performance line tilting down. Russell 2000 went up. However, it is the weakest of the four ETFs. It is significantly away from the all-time high. The relative performance is also showing that it is underperforming the market. SPY is overbought. QQQ and DIA are also overbought in the weekly charts. Russell 2000 is underperforming and it is not overbought yet. The weekly charts of these four ETFs show a bullish picture of the market. The same ETFs now using daily interval. They are also showing a bullish picture. All of them are moving up. Russell 2000 ETF IWM was the only one that was having a memory resistance line. Now price has broken above that. It is underperforming the market. So is DIA. DIA and IWM are not overbought in the daily charts. QQQ and SPY are overbought. The daily charts also paint a bullish picture of the market. One month sector performance analysis. We are looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week before and the blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week seven of the sectors went up. Financials was the best performing sector. Of the four sectors that went down, utilities, real estate and healthcare are considered to be defensive sectors. Therefore, though four sectors went down, overall it paints a bullish picture of the market. Three of the four down sectors are actually defensive sectors. That shows the market is bullish. Healthcare had a large reversal. In a single week, it erased the gain of previous three weeks. Looking at that, you could probably take some very profitable short trades in healthcare stocks. On 11th April, on our Twitter forum, I shared my bearish view on LLY. Let's carry out a 360 degrees analysis using Q systems. 
of LLY from Q Vital stock scorecard we can see that LLY has medium valuation the valuation is in yellow color that shows it is neither overvalued nor a value stock the latest quarter earnings growth column is showing that though the earnings growth is positive it is decelerating it came down from 32 percent to 16 percent earnings growth the decreasing earnings growth gives us a reason to look for a short trade in terms of fundamentals what about the industry from q edge real time industry scorecard we can see that the industry is clearly weak it is magenta color and the score is reducing over multiple review periods weak industry decreasing earnings growth this is the kind of stock where we would look for a short opportunity using q charts let's have a look at lly using q charts we are using the at a glance template weekly daily template to analyze lly in the weekly chart one week ago it displayed the bearish headwind possible reversal signal at that time the weekly backdrop candle color turned bearish magenta this week lly dropped again the candle color and shape both are bearish in the weekly chart in the daily chart also we had a bearish headwind possible reversal signal at the very top that candle also created a false upside breakout price tried to go above this watermark resistance level but failed and reversed subsequently price started to go down we had series of magenta color candles i shared the twitter post based on this day's candle 11th april at that time we had a magenta flow color candle in the daily chart price was already going down weekly candle color was magenta and price was breaking below a number of memory support lines that gave us a go with flow trend following short trade setup which was also a breakout trade setup you could take the short position at the close of that day putting stop just above the recent high which would be just above the memory resistance line 11th april was thursday on friday price fell sharply our initial profit target would be the lower boundary level that is the initial profit target for a trend following short trend or you could also book partial profit once the risk distance is covered another look at the sectors using q edge real time sector scorecard and heat map it analyzes the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days etc assigns a scorecard and heat map to the entire table cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness looking at the 5 days column you can see financials and infotech are the strongest sector now if you are looking for a buying opportunity you might look into these sectors and if you are looking for a shorting opportunity you might look for that in the weakest sectors these are healthcare materials and real estate other than calculating the strength and scorecard across these review periods give edge also calculates acceleration deceleration and shows that in the base column cyan color represents acceleration and magenta represents deceleration from that you can see that consumer staples and utilities though they are not strong now they are accelerating therefore you might look for buying opportunity in these sectors 
and the sectors that are decelerating most they are real estate and materials you may be cautious if you are holding long position in this and look for shorting opportunities that is the conclusion you can arrive at from the sector level analysis however sector level is very broad to make more accurate trading decisions you may drill down into the industry level and buy into strong industries and short into weak industries best performing industries we are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores in q technique we like to take long position in stocks that are fundamentally strong that are in strong industries and are giving low risk buy trade setup going by that principle you are going to look for only long opportunities in these strong industries and avoid shorting we saw just a while ago that financials is the strongest sector and we have reinsurance as one of the strongest industries you might look for fundamentally strong stocks giving buy setup in this industry. In QH real time industry scorecard and heat map, strongest industries of the week are shown by cyan color under 5 days column. Reinsurance is one of the strongest industries. Looking to the right, you can see that it was weak earlier. Its scores were in magenta color and now the score is turning bullish cyan. This week it is one of the strongest industries. Drilling down into the reinsurance industry, I found this interesting stock MHLD. It has optimal valuation shown by cyan color score under valuation column and it has an extremely high dividend yield 24 percent strong earnings quality and also a short squeeze potential mhld went up by 8.6 percent on friday let's have a look at its technical charts MHLD using weekly backdrop chart template. The stock is clearly in a downtrend. This was earnings week. At that time, the backdrop candle color was magenta. Since then, for three successive weeks, price is gradually going up. The backdrop candle color has turned cyan. The same price move is shown more clearly in the daily chart. This was the earnings day. Since then, price is gradually moving up. At the right edge, price was inside a triangle pattern. On Friday, price broke out of the triangle pattern, broke out of the memory resistance, and the flow candle color turned bullish cyan. If we look at the same stock using volatility chart template, we can see that it is inside an extreme squeeze. If the stock can break out of the squeeze to the upside, you might look for a buying opportunity. You might consider buying the stock as a dividend play. It has very high dividend yield rate. Or you could also look at it as a buying opportunity at pendulum or price extreme low that is starting to move up worst performing industries of the week just like you would look for buying opportunity in strong industries you would look for shorting opportunities in weak industries these industries and avoid buying Pharmaceuticals is one of the worst performing industries. I already discussed a short opportunity in this industry, LLY. 
you might look for other shorting opportunities from this and other weak industries. Accelerating industries, these may be behind others but are gaining momentum fast and you would look for buying opportunities here and avoid shorting. During sector analysis, we saw that consumer staples is the most accelerating sector and that acceleration is shown in the accelerating industries as well. Six of the ten most accelerating industries are in consumer staples. These are food retail, packaged foods and meats, tobacco, agricultural products, food distributors and household products. Looking at this industry's acceleration, you might look for buying opportunity in fundamentally strong stocks. Back to QH, we are looking at the sector scorecard and heat map. Looking at the pace column that shows acceleration and deceleration, you can instantly see that consumer staples is the most accelerating sector. If we look at the industries out of the top 10 accelerating industries, many of them are in consumer staples. Food retail is one of them. Its 5 day score is cyan. Looking to the right, you can see it was very weak before. Score was in magenta color. If we drill down into the food retail industry, we find Kroger KR. It has optimal valuation shown by cyan color in the valuation column. It pays a small dividend of 2.1% and this week it went up by 7.4%. Looking at the acceleration of the sector, acceleration of the food retail industry and the fundamental valuation of Kroger, you might look for a buy setup in this stock using Q charts. On our Twitter forum on 10th April, I shared my view on Kroger saying that it might give a Q360 degree buy opportunity. I followed up with a detailed forum post on 11th April before market open. Let's have a look at the forum post. These snapshots are using live charts as of the time I shared the trade idea. The food retail industry was becoming stronger. Score was turning from magenta to cyan. The pace column was showing acceleration. Valuation wise Kroger was and is optimally valued. This is how the chart looked like at that time. In the weekly chart, we had a bullish shape candle. After a sharp drop, price was moving sideways and then gave us a bullish shape candle with a bull release signal in the weekly chart. At the same time, in the daily chart, we had a bullish shape and bullish color candle. Price broke out of the memory resistance line extreme bullish pressure. The technical charts, the fundamentals and the industry acceleration led me to share a bullish idea in Kroger at that time. How did Kroger turn out so far? This is Kroger as of Friday's market close. I shared the bullish idea based on this cyan color candle when it was breaking out of the memory resistance with extreme bullish pressure. Since then, price has gone up. It has hit the upper boundary. You might book partial profit and you might continue to hold the remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. 
finally these are the decelerating industries this may be ahead of others at present but they are losing momentum you would be cautious if you are holding long position in these industries and look for shorting opportunities the market is bullish you might not take many short trades but if the market starts to decline then these decelerating industries may give the best shorting opportunities the weak industries that are found from qh would also give good shorting opportunities if the market starts to decline those were the regular topics before i end let me summarize market is looking bullish this bullishness is evident from the market breadth analysis market internals are bullish and the broad market indices nasdaq and nyse both are bullish the market etfs are also bullish sectors are bullish though four sectors decline three of them are in defensive sectors therefore the sectors are bullish as well in such a bullish market it is easier to profit from long trades you can easily find high probability low risk long trades by aligning forces from the stock level industry level and the fundamental level you can find high probability low risk long opportunities by drilling into strong industries or accelerating industries finding fundamentally strong stocks and then looking for q trade setups in those stocks we could find several such opportunities in this week and we could identify several possible trade setups for the coming week as well you may look for more q360 degrees trade ideas from the traders forum q traders forum it is open to the public and you can learn more about the q systems and techniques from the resources available from the education menu all the educational resources are also open to the public that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great week and trade profitably